Welcome, 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 welcome to Scary Stories, the channel that tells you scary stories. Hey, this is your old pal Bigfoot, and I've got two scary dogman stories today for Tuesday. Let's get started with a story that allegedly took place in Connecticut. I don't hear too many stories about Dogman in Connecticut. In fact, I didn't even know he could afford to live there. But at least one upright walking canid seems to have ventured into the state, according to the person who sent us an email entitled, The Dogman of Danbury, Connecticut, as told to and read by Peter Bernard. When my wife Paula and I were newlyweds, and that was a long time ago, we used to sometimes visit her parents who lived in Danbury, Connecticut. On the drive there one time for some reason we both started talking about this one little turn off on the highway on the way there. It seemed to lead to a patch of dirt. I wondered if it went deeper into the woods and if it led to anywhere. She wondered the same thing. It oddly led to us discussing it further on the way home. I suggested we go and check it out one time, park there and walk into the woods. Paula said that if it were a place for people to pull over who had car trouble, then our car might get towed away and the woods might get searched if we left the car there. Then again, it might go unnoticed for months, who knew? We decided if we ever checked that out, we would leave a note on the dashboard saying we went into the forest and would be back by some given time. We were both satisfied that we had a solid plan. Then we proceeded to forget about all of this for almost a decade. It came after our first serious fight and breakup, or after we made up, I mean. We were in a nostalgic mood, and the subject of that area off of the highway in Danbury came up. Her parents had moved to Florida years earlier, so we hadn't had a reason to be out there for a long time. We debated about the note we would leave on the windshield. Should we hand write it? Should we type it up and print it out? Would that make it look like a kidnapping? What exactly should the note say? Believe it or not, I was actually excited as we went on a drive out to Danbury on that warm October afternoon. My wife was driving and as we approached the spot in question, she slowed down for the turnoff. I suddenly felt the most extreme feeling that we had made a mistake and we should not be where we were. I clutched the seat of the car as though we were in an airplane coming in for a landing. After parking, my wife caught the expression on my face and burst out laughing. I must have looked really weirded out because that's how I felt. So we got out, leaving our carefully agreed upon sign in the front windshield saying we'd be back by 3.30. We had agreed to make it handwritten so that we could write in the time once we got there. It was around 2.20 p.m., so we figured we'd be certain to be back by 3.30. Paula walked off into the woods and I trailed behind her, staring around me like I'd never seen a tree before. Everything seemed so strange to me and uninviting. I won't say I heard a voice in my head telling me to get out, but I won't say I didn't. Every atom of me wanted to get the heck out of that forest, but I couldn't think of a logical reason why. I was afraid to mention it to my wife 
because she's usually the one who has instinctive feelings about things, and I have often mocked her for this trait. I couldn't really expect her to be nice to me if I suddenly was the one sensing something strange and otherworldly. I was so on edge, I didn't want to hear her laugh at me. So it was a very confusing moment. We were walking along a beaten down path, having no idea where we were going. Paula wondered if we would encounter something wonderful. I wondered if we were walking into some kind of terrible trap. I guess we both sort of got our wishes fulfilled as in the next second, we both heard a growling noise. Less than a minute into the forest, and we'd already been encountered by a threatening predator. We just turned right around and started heading back out when we heard more growling in front of us. Paula whispered that it sounded like a dog pack or maybe coyotes. I figured she must be right but I couldn't see them anywhere and the growling seemed to be coming from the trees over our heads. I could not imagine or visualize what we were hearing and I wasn't sure what direction to walk in. We both stood in that one spot, turning around, hearing sounds suggesting that we'd been surrounded. I was so frightened, I can't even begin to describe it to you. It was my feeling that I had come to life. It turned out I was right. I really had felt some sort of negative energy emerging from this location. But what good did that do for me? I still didn't know what to do. There was a sound like bushes moving behind us, and when we turned around, what we saw took our breath away. It was this evil looking dog thing from somebody's nightmare. It stood on its hind legs, but it was hunched over kind of like a tyrannosaur or a kangaroo, but its arms were much longer than either of those, and they ended in sick looking claws. It had the head of a coyote or a dingo or some kind of dog, but its ears were taller than a dog's ears, almost as long as a rabbit or a hare. It bared its teeth at me, and they look much more like a dog's teeth than a rabbit or rodent's. Its head was a little higher than me, and I'm six feet tall. I had to look up to see it, and this creature was bending over. So it had to be seven or eight feet tall if it were standing at full height. When it focused on us, its eyes almost popped out of their sockets. I never saw a thing so furiously angry before. It was almost like you could see the veins popping out under its fur. It was that unhappy at our presence. The thing let out a scream, or a bark, or a roar. I don't know what it was, but I felt almost as though the sound were physically battering into me. This was all a very extreme experience, and both of us were screaming in shock. We ran away from the thing, but I remembered there was at least one more of the creatures hiding in the direction in which we were running. There was a good chance we might get into even more trouble running in this direction. But what choice did we have? This was the direction of our car. 
We ran to that car and Paula fumbled with the keys. Those were the days when you used your key to open the car door. Or at least we did with that old car. As she got in, I knew she'd unlock my door in a second. So I turned my head to look behind me and see what was there. My knees gave out and I had to hold on to the car to keep standing up. There was that same dog man from before, standing at the edge of the wood line, watching us. And there, next to him, was another dog man that had to be one and a half times as tall as the first one. That was what we ran past? We ran past this 11 or 12 foot tall behemoth without knowing it? There's no way we would have done it if we knew what we were doing. So it's lucky for us that we didn't. On the way home, I told Paula about my feeling that I had as we drove up to the place that we shouldn't go inside. She tore into me, not making fun of me for having that feeling, but she was upset with me for not sharing my feelings with her. She said it was my fault that we almost got ourselves killed. It led to another big fight between us and we took some time off of the marriage, I have to admit. We were fine again in less than a month, but I don't think either of us will ever fully get over the experience. I mean, it's not like it happened in a random spot. It happened in a place we had weirdly spoken about for years. There was no apparent reason why that one turn off in Danbury would be so interesting to us. It was almost like something laid a trap for us and took 10 years to spring it. But that's crazy talk. It was almost definitely just a random encounter. You could go back to that place every day for the next 10 years and I bet you'd never encounter another dogman ever again. I said, you could go back there, not me. You couldn't pay me to go back to the spot where I saw the dogman of Danbury, Connecticut. We've got another dogman story right after this. I was curious when the next Northeast Comic Con is and who's going to be appearing there. Boy, was I surprised when I checked their website and found out it says I'm going to be there and it's Thanksgiving weekend. I did my due diligence as a fake news journalist and discovered that yes, in fact, they are offering to pay for me to go out and appear as myself, braving the traffic to and from Boston on one of the craziest weekends of the year. So I guess if you live in Massachusetts and you're bored of Tofurky after Thanksgiving, then come on down and say hi to Futurama Zone, Billy West, Godzilla's co-star Akira Takarada, and other luminaries who I assume must live near Boston. Sounds like fun. See you there. Dogman on our roof as told to and read by Peter Bernard. Dear Scary Stories, I live in Massachusetts now, but my whole family used to live in New Orleans. We had a private home on Desire Street not far from the famous St. Vincent de Paul Cemetery. One day, I was walking past that cemetery, and I noticed that the gate was open, so I looked inside. There are all the tall white structures that all the people are buried inside, and all the rows between them. Suddenly, something large darted from one side to the other right to left, it happened very quickly, but at the time, I was certain I had seen a Lugaroo, or a Rugaroo, what you call a werewolf, or a dogman. It was in the cemetery, running loose. I quickened my step and got home as quickly as I could, looking back over my shoulder, frequently. 
That's not really what I'm writing to you about, but it's how I first realized that there are actual werewolves out roaming the neighborhood. At least there were in those days. So anyway, I slept on the second floor of the house. Actually, I guess we all did, but I had my own room on the corner. One night, I woke up and I couldn't understand why. Usually I get up for a reason, but this time I was just up. I tried to go back to sleep, but I heard noises coming from above me. It wasn't coming from the attic. I knew that sound. My sisters had played in the attic before while I had been trying to study, so I knew this was not that sound. This was the sound of someone on the roof, over the attic. I went and woke up my father. My mother was away, I think at her sister's or my grandma's place, I forget. But anyway, I went and woke my father up and told him there was someone on our roof. He got upset, asking how someone could have gotten into our attic. I told him again that the sound was not coming from the attic. It was coming from the roof over the attic. He wasn't really awake yet, and he didn't understand what I was saying. By now, my sisters were up too, and so we all went to my room and listened. Nothing. And then, suddenly, my sister screamed a blood-curdling scream. She was staring in horror at the window in my room. There, at the top, was a face hanging upside down. It was the face of a wolf. A wolf hanging upside down from our roof? The animal dropped straight down and we heard it land in a bush down below. By the time I got to the window, I could see it running across our backyard and disappearing behind a fence on our neighbor's property. It was a wolf, all right, but it ran and jumped over fences on its hind legs the way a human would. Was this the same one as the cemetery? Was it just looking in my window randomly, or was there a specific reason? We never found out. As I went the next day to stay with my grandma for a while, and dad sold the place. Like I said, we've moved all the way north to Massachusetts where all of us except my younger sister still live. It's much more peaceful up here, and we've never seen Dogman again, although my older sister lives in a place that she says is haunted. And so that's the story of the time there was a Dogman on my roof. Do you have a scary story you want us to read on the show? Just call our voicemail hotline, 804-LA-SCARY. That's 804-537-2279. And now for something completely scary. Check out the audio podcast version of Scary Stories NYC, now available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and other popular podcatchers. <gasps> Bigfoot Attacked My Tiny House. Scary Stories by Peter Bernard, Volume 1, now available on Amazon in paperback. Scary story. Scary story.